Welcome back to the Jacob Kersey program. I am Jacob Kersey at Real Jacob Kersey on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram if you'd like to connect there. Also, Real Jacob Kersey on um, uh, Real Jacob Kersey at gmail.com if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. My name is on the screen. So, Real Jacob Kersey at gmail.com if you have any concerns. And if you're listening via Apple Podcasts, please leave a review. We greatly appreciate it. All right, well, I'm excited uh, about this episode here um, because on this episode we'll have a very special guest um, someone who I've been wanting to have on the show for a while and now I finally have the opportunity and I'm really excited um, to be able to talk with him today but really quick let me just give you an introduction Um, Bruce Marciano is an actor author and ministry director and he is best known for his portrayal of Jesus in the visual Bible and in the pure flicks hit The Encounter uh, that is a movie as well as a spin-off series. In addition, he was the producer slash director in the pro-life film Allison's Choice and is the founder of Marciano Ministries, which is a nonprofit outreach ministry largely involved in South Africa, where Bruce has planted and built churches, conducted innumerable innumerable uh, outreaches, and currently provides daily meals to 300 plus destitute and HIV affected children. Uh, and we'll include a link in the show notes uh, to his website. We'll talk more about all that at the end. But I'm, I'm really excited to have him on. Bruce, thank you for coming on today. Yeah, Jacob, it's just a pleasure. It's a pleasure to meet a young guy like you who uh, obviously loves the Lord and uh, is doing wonderful things. So it's a blessing to be with you. Yes, sir. Very blessed to be able to talk with you. And I'm excited uh, for my audience as well uh, to be able to learn more about what you're doing and how the Lord is is using you. So I only touched the tip of all that you do and, and all that you have done. You've been involved with a lot of different things, and you're you're currently involved with several different things. And you had things going on before you portrayed Jesus. Even uh, Jesus wasn't the start of um, of your career. Uh, you were doing things before. So could you share more about yourself with my audience? Well. Uh, I grew up in Southern California and uh, didn't know the Lord until I was in my 30s. I uh, started my acting career in 1984 and uh, uh, started in uh, what we used to call episodic television. I don't know that it exists much in, in anymore, but uh, uh, dramatic shows on NBC and ABC and whatnot, just small roles to begin to build my career. And uh, in 1989, I gave my life to the Lord, biggest moment of my life. And uh, shortly thereafter, in 1992, I was asked to do my first Christian film. Uh, uh, You referred to it, the visual Bible, the Gospel of Matthew. I was actually asked to portray Jesus in that. And uh, that was just a life-changing, mind-blowing, life-altering <laughs> uh, experience, and after which my life would never be the same. And uh, all my activities after that have all been ministry-related and uh, Christian films and Christian books and, uh, and just wonderful things that, uh, that glorify the Lord and draw people to him. So uh, here I am all these years later, still doing more of the same. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned there um, you you decided to follow Jesus, I believe you said in your 30s. Can you tell my audience about that time? What was going on in your life? Yeah, my career was uh, advancing nicely after years of struggle. Uh, an actor's life is not an easy life. And um, the competition is ferocious. So after years of struggle, my career was starting to take off. And uh, without going into all the details and everything, it, uh, it, it just as suddenly took a downturn. And, um, you know, I, I was at the point, I, I thought my, my childhood dreams were about to be realized. And it was like the rug got pulled out from under me. And, uh, and in that... Uh, pit of despair, may I phrase it that way. Like a lot of people, I just turned to Jesus. I just cried out to Jesus. A lot of people had spoken God's word into my life over the years and shared the Lord, and uh, and all that took root. 
in July of 1989. And it was like I had to make a decision what was going to be the Lord of my life, whether it was going to be my career or whether it was going to be Jesus. And I just, uh, I just, <laughs> by God's grace, I turned to Jesus and he flooded in with salvation and uh, redemption and hope for goodness on this side of life. And, uh, and like I said earlier, it was off to the races. Mm -hmm. Life was changed forever. Wow. Yeah, it, it's just amazing even uh, the slight bit of humor in, in, in the way all that took place because I know listening to you talk before and, and other, on other interviews and everything, you, you talked about how when you were, you know, before you came to Christ, you were always playing the bad guy. And then after you started following Christ and had that relationship restored with God, you started, you went from playing just the average bad guy and then you were playing the good guy. Explain, explain how you went from the bad guy to the good guy. <laughs> no, it's true. My father is Italian. My mother is Syrian. So I, uh, when I was younger especially, I just had very ethnic looks. And, you know, Hollywood and film is a very stereotyping uh, world. You're stereotyped by how you look. And so I got plugged into kind of darker roles, uh, like mafia kind of guys. Um <laughs> those kinds of roles and uh and and i was actually doing pretty well for myself there was a very very uh, big movie made in the 80s called mobsters uh, i think it starred Kiefer sutherland and charlie sheen and a few other guys and i remember screen testing for that movie it was like uh it was like i was knocking at the door of great great remarkable success based on that characterization, those monster characterization. So I got born again, and the Lord just immediately began uh, speaking to me, if I can phrase it that way, just moving on my heart to, uh, to play redemptive roles. And I remember one time being with a friend, and, uh, and just I was expressing my frustration about not being able to find work. And she said... Uh, she said, you know, maybe you ought to do this, that, and the other. And I looked at her and I said, no, I think the Lord just wants me to start playing nice guys. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the next role I got was the role of, if I can phrase it this way, the nicest guy in universal history, the son of a living God, Jesus. <laughs> so uh, the Lord had a plan, a wonderful plan. Yeah, you went to start, you started playing the nice guy, capital T, capital N. It's amazing how that worked out. You got out. it. You got it. <laughs> I want to focus in on on that uh, for a majority of this uh, interview here. I, I'm interested in how has how portraying Jesus in in the films and the TV shows has changed you because you made this statement. Um, you were talking and you posted this on your YouTube channel, uh, and you made this statement. You were talking about the seven weeks preparation that you had for the visual Bible, the gospel of Matthew. And you made this statement and I quote, I actually had no idea who he talked about. Jesus really, really is. I had never taken the time to get to know him. And so you spent seven weeks just, just crying out for Jesus and, and searching because you wanted to play that role and you wanted to do the best you possibly could as a human. So how has portraying Jesus in these films and TV shows changed you and impacted you? Yeah, it would take hours and hours <laughs> and days and days to do that question justice. Let's just say that, uh, you know, Jesus is one of those persons that I think everybody just assumes they know everything about him. It's kind of interesting. And I know for myself, you know, you you get born again and it's just off to the Christian races, it's just wonderful. But but it's a whole different thing to stop and take the time to get to know him. It's kinda of interesting. You know, prayer life is so often about ourselves, you know. <laughs> uh you know, it's like Lord as if he doesn't understand us, you know, Lord, you don't understand me. I just need this and I just need that. Um, but the reality is it's, it's we who don't understand him. And, and 
And so for purposes of the film, I was, was forced to turn my focus on understanding him. And I think of uh, uh, the scripture, Jeremiah, what is it? Is it 29, 13, I think. It says, when you seek me with all of your heart, I will be found. And, and I think that's our downfall. Uh, even we who walk with the Lord, you know, we, we, we love him, but, but there's that all of your heart factor hmm. that's missing. And I was kind of forced into that to portray him accurately and uh and all i can say is i i discovered him like i never imagined in a depth of love and compassion and care and and self-sacrifice i just i could go on and on uh uh with with who i came to understand him to be blown away my life was changed and the fascinating thing is is I've still only scratched the surface. <laughs> you know, he's he's so beyond fully knowing, uh, and yet he calls us to seek him again with all of our hearts. Yeah, that that's the amazing thing. Um, you know, devotion and prayer time, where it's like you, you come back and one day you're just blown away by something that, that you realize by reading scripture and then you come back and then all of a sudden it's like wow something else and then, and then you're blown away by that it's almost like it's mm-hmm. n- never ceasing to be amazed by by the man jesus and by who god is and how loving and compassionate and and powerful and great he he is yeah yeah you you used a great phrase there jacob we must we must never stop being amazed by him yeah because he is on all levels at all times amazing yes sir yeah i'm i'm interested because you know you you had to do this for for a film right you were you were portraying jesus in a film so you had to spend 7 weeks just tirelessly trying to prepare not only um spiritually and, and but you had to memorize things and you also had to work out um you you talk about how you know Jesus was a physical man because he was a carpenter, and so you were required to work out a little bit. So you you know you appeared like like Jesus was you know actually did something, um, wasn't a couch potato. So, but, but uh, as a Christian, we're supposed to be followers of Christ, and 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 Ephesians five verses one and two, uh, Paul said, therefore be imitators of God, as dearly loved children. And walk in love as Christ also loved us and gave himself for us a sacrificial and fragrant offering to God. And I, you talk about, in and, and some of your videos, about how Jesus gave 100% to us. And so I know you spent a lot of time preparing to be him, but what about ordinary, you know, well, just ordinary Christians? They're not portraying Jesus in a film. Should they try their very best to imitate Christ, like like if they were portraying him in a film, just to try to be like him, give their all to being like Jesus? Yes. <laughs> but they, there, there's no qualification for that. We're, we're called to, as the scripture uh, you recite, it says, be imitators of him. You know, we're, we're created in his image and likeness. And uh, because of, of the world and our life in this, in this world and the, and the flesh and all these things, we, we, we start to, to lose that image and likeness. And, and the redemptive work of Jesus, the work of the Holy Spirit, is, is, is one, to draw us to him, and two, to return us to that image and likeness, the image and likeness of himself. And so, yes, that's our quest as as God's children to uh, become imitators of Him. You know, uh, uh, if, if if I was an imitator of Him for purposes of the film only, oh, what a heartbreaking hypocrisy it mm-hmm. would be. Uh, uh, the real work, the real portrayal of Jesus for all of us is day by day and our personal interactions with our family and friends, especially in front of uh, those who are around us who don't yet know the Lord. Um, 
for me personally, and this is just my humble feeling, that that's the difference. That's the difference. You know, we, we do a lot of talking about Jesus, but it's when they see him in our behavior, when they see him in the way we conduct our lives. Therein is, is the difference. That's when they'll go, oh, wow, this guy is for real, and go running to Jesus. So, yeah, let us be imitators of Christ. So some in the audience might say, well, Bruce, that's easy for you to say. You're you're an actor, and so you you learn how to how to portray people. What about me? How how can I, you know, in, in every single day, not just for the film, but every single day, how can I do that? Like I'm, you're saying, I'm supposed to. How can we go about being imitators of Jesus and being just like Him, moment by moment? Yeah, there have been books and volumes written to answer that question, uh, but. If I can just briefly say, take a look at Galatians 5. Uh, Galatians 5 outlines the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Now, now the fruit is, is like the product, but the, <laughs> the result of what the Holy Spirit does in us. And if you go down that list of Galatians 5, I don't remember the exact verses, uh, love, patience, um, uh, long-suffering. Uh, humility. It's a list of, of behavioral characteristics. And what it is, is an outline of the personality of Jesus. It's a frame-by-frame frame picture of what an imitator of Jesus looks like. In other words, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, seeking God with all of our hearts and allowing the Holy Spirit to work in us, is the key to returning us to his image and likeness. So I would say bury yourself in, in the Word. Memorize that list of Galatians 5 and uh, seek him with all of your heart. Then there's hard decisions that have to be made, Jacob. We don't quite realize how drawn we are to the things of the world and, uh, and just our own desires and entertainment and things that that may be good but they're not him and uh, so there comes a point where we where we need to just make hard decisions to quite often push away uh, uh, the things that distract us from him and and draw close to him so it takes work but uh, let's start by looking at Galatians 5 and focus and on those character traits, it's a good place to start. Yes, and that's for the audience. Uh, Galatians 5, verses 22 and 23, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The law is not against such things. And um, you've, you've talked about how Jesus sought us with every ounce of his being. And, uh, you know, you're talking about the creator of the universe, the all-powerful one seeking us with everything inside of him, every ounce of his being, um, how, you know, we just need to do the same as much as we possibly can, seek him with everything inside of us. And I like something you said as well, uh, the trick, you said this, the trick for me to represent him accurately was a transformation in me. Something you said in one of your videos and just that love and, and compassion and self-control. Um, yes, yes. Um you know, to approach playing Jesus as an actor and using skills that I've learned and techniques and things, that, that's going to, for my, for me, that's, it, it's going to give people a surface, you know, a shallow representation of him. What I needed was a heart change. What I needed was a transformation in myself to represent him accurately. And again, uh, I just pursued that on my knees and uh, and in His Word. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you definitely have to get down on your knees and, and with everything inside of you, seek Him. And even something you said earlier, we don't realize how drawn we are to the things of this world. And I, I like how in, in the encounter 
uh, both the movies, uh, the Paradise Lost and the the first one, and in, in the spinoff series, it's just the even sometimes the Christian, not necessarily the agnostics or the atheist in the in the series, but just these contemporary Christians, they they they're talking to the man Jesus, who you portray and and. They just don't realize how drawn they are to the things of this world. They're Christians, and then they're telling Jesus things that you know they're drawn to, or they're questioning, or they're doubting, and and He just shows them how really and truly they're not focusing on Him, even as Christians, but they're focusing on their own desires or things of this world. And I like how the encounter uh, does that. Yeah, I appreciate that. You know, the encounter is is just the concept of the encounter for people who haven't seen the movies or the or the show is is Jesus in the contemporary world meeting people in in their contemporary struggles and issues and challenges. And it's uh it's a concept I actually had. I actually wrote an outline for a pilot. Um uh, using this concept way back in probably 1999. And I remember shopping it around to a few people, and uh, uh, everybody loved the idea, but nobody would come forward with the funding <laughs> needed to, to make it. Um, and eventually, years later, uh, Pure Flix um, uh, came up with the exact same concept, Hmm. came up with the encounter movie the first encounter movie and uh and it's just been a tremendous ministry the bottom line is jesus intimate in your life today and like you say calling us all away from the things of the world and closer to himself indeed and there are so many um films that you've you've been a part of that you know I'm sure people that are listening have questions about, and and I even have questions about different roles and different parts of, and scenes and everything. And maybe sometime in the future we can uh, <laughs> get into that because I know we're limited today. But I'm I'm really curious. I, I think out of all, all out of all that I've seen, one 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 part that has impacted me the most is in the first Encounter movie. I believe it was the first where all these uh, random people uh, meet. Jesus at this diner, and uh, Nick, who I believe he was a football player, and he had this restaurant, and a very, very famous guy, character in the film, and Jesus pleads with him all throughout the film, trying to get him to look away from the things of the world and just accept him and realize that all Nick really needed was him, was, was Jesus. And at the last moment, Nick decides to leave the diner. And then Jesus made the statement, and I'm paraphrasing here, but one of the hardest things about being God is to know no matter how much you plead and no matter how much you 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 seek and, and you try to get them to see, it's ultimately they their decision and they, they he Nick in the film chooses to to not choose Jesus and Nick will die without Jesus. I think that's impacted me so much and, and just to know that Jesus pleads and seeks people who ultimately reject him. What was it like uh, for that specific part um, playing Jesus there and knowing, you know, hey, Nick is rejecting Jesus. How can Jesus, you know, if you know he's going to reject him, how can you show that Jesus is still seeking him and, and, and desiring him? What was it like playing that part? Yeah, you know, I'll I'll tell you something that happened behind the scenes while we were doing that. Uh, um, we were filming that moment when Nick walks out the door. He decides he's going to reject Jesus completely, and he's walking out the door. And uh, and Jesus knows this is it. He knows this is he's just closed the door on his last opportunity for salvation. And uh, and we were filming that scene, and and Nick walked out the door, and and I just broke down in tears, playing Jesus. I just broke down in tears, and I started weeping in front of the camera. And I remember 
it was just a holy moment. It was just an expression of the heartbreak of God for anyone who would choose against him, because he alone understands the fullness of those consequences. And uh, eventually the director cut the scene. And uh, you can imagine the whole crew, they were, <laughs> they were just frozen still. They couldn't believe what they had seen. And, uh, and the director came to me and, and he said, I want to do it again, but without the crying. And I said, I, I don't understand. And, and he said, you know, I think it's just a little too much. And I argued with him. I said, that's what people need to understand. They need, they need to see the tears of God over uh, people who reject him. They need to see the heartbreak of God. And we had a bit of a discussion mm -hmm. about it. Uh, but at the end of the day, he's the director, and it's my job as an actor to do what he wants me to do. So we f did a second take. Nick walked out the door, and I restrained my tears. Uh, for me, sadly, they used that second take in the film. Um, I did a, a film, I produced and directed a film with the same concept called Allison's Choice. It's a film about Jesus confronting a girl who's planning an abortion. And uh, the same thing happened. One of the girls goes in to have an abortion, and the Jesus character just breaks down weeping and weeping and weeping. And I can't tell you how many testimonies I've gotten from people who have seen that. It's one of those things that, yes, makes us uncomfortable, but we so need to understand how deeply it breaks his heart that even one would be lost, and in terms of Allison's choice, that even one baby would be taken by his or her mother. So, yeah, I'm big on the compassion of Jesus and the heartbreak of Jesus, and uh, that's what that moment was like. Wow. Yeah, and I, I just watched uh, Allison's Choice in preparation for this interview, and I, without, I don't want to spoil too much about the movie, but uh, when you know Jesus started crying there, um, I started crying. <laughs> Uh, and you know, normally with with films, it, it takes a, a really for me, and not trying to sound really tough, but you know, normally I don't I don't cry very easily with films. I, I can pretty much hold it in, but I, you know, I was really fighting back the tears of that scene. I kind of had to look away. Um, <laughs> so that well, I would definitely Lord, because those tears are motivated by God's spirit. I have no doubt about that. For That's a young guy like you to understand the heartbreak of God over these things uh, is just a wonderful thing. Yes, sir. And I, I highly encourage the audience, uh, the encounter, uh, Alice and Choice, and, and all these others, but you know those two especially for for us today and the world we're living in, those are some great films. I, we only have about a minute and a half left. Um, I want to ask you or let you tell my audience about Marciano Ministries because uh, you do more outside of just acting and writing uh, you're also the director of this ministry um, so what you're doing there how people can help out and also you have an upcoming project the Gospel of John you can share that with my audience if you'd like yeah thank you um, you know I started uh, as a result of the films I, I started getting speaking invitations and to make a long story short I, I go out and share some of the things that I've been sharing with you today and people started getting saved, and I realized the Lord was calling me to a ministry. And that was way back in the 90s. And uh, to this day, we're going strong, done tremendous work in Africa, uh, stretched into uh, humanitarian uh, relief of AIDS-affected uh, children, and on and on. And the Lord has blessed me with the tremendous opportunity uh, of an ongoing ministry. Part of that ministry it has uh, begun producing films. Alice's Choice was my first, and now I'm in the middle of producing a film of the gospel according to John. And uh, I do things a little bit differently. Um, I don't have investors, uh, so to speak. I, uh, I do my funding through donations, through the body of Christ. 
um, if I can put it this way, John is a film uh, created by the body of Christ to reach uh, a world who needs Jesus. So I would really invite your your listeners to uh, learn more about it at marchianoministries.com, um, and you'll see a, a trailer for the film. It's in process, and just really invite your folks to come on and join us for the contribution, marchianoministries.com. Yes, and we'll have a, a link to marchianoministries.com in the show notes, so if you want to go on there, you can click and go on and check more about the Gospel of John. Um, but just one more question. I, I, I haven't seen anything. Is there a release date yet on the Gospel of John, or are you still working on that? We're still working on that. We need to drum up more funds before we can continue filming. We're about one-third of the way through filming. Mm -hmm. So it all depends on how quickly those funds come in, and we get the cameras rolling on the, on the rest of uh, the filming. And then there's a post-production process, and then we'll release. I'm hoping to do the film before the end of this year and, uh, and release toward the end of 2021. Okay. Awesome. Well, uh, yeah, for those of you that, that want to see this film, um, The Gospel of John, and watch the trailer. <laughs> I watched the trailer recently. Um, I'm excited about it. I can't wait to see the, the finished product. And hopefully maybe then again we'll have you to come on and talk about what it was like filming that. Uh, so something to look forward to in the future, but definitely go on MarcianoMinistries.com. Check that out and all, everything else that Bruce Marciano is doing. Bruce, anything you'd like to say before before you go? You know, I'm just going to compliment you, Jacob. You're just a lovely young man. You're, and, uh, you know, it's a real pleasure. I do a lot of interviews, and you never know quite what you're going to get on the other end of the phone. And, <laughs> and I just extend tremendous compliment of brotherhood to you. You're a lovely young man who obviously loves the Lord. And, uh, and I pray great success over you. And, and I'll just be happy to come on and do your show anytime, Jacob. You're a blessing. I appreciate it, Bruce, uh, and I appreciate all of you listening. Uh, please go check out, I, I highly encourage you, The Encounter, Allison's Choice, um, and the, even some of these others. Um, and you can you can check out all the things that Bruce has been involved in. If you just Google his name, also, com, and really go check out The Gospel of John. Thank you, Bruce. Uh, thank every one of you. Um, if you could please just share this interview with other people if you really enjoyed it, and also leaving us a review on Apple Podcasts uh, helps spread the word about what we're doing here on the Jacob Kersey program. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, realjacobkersey at gmail.com, at realjacobkersey on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. God bless all of you. Hope you have a great rest of your day.